In this recording, we look at an example of using implicit differentiation in a case where the product rule is also required. Recall what the product rule for differentiation is. Suppose we're differentiating a function z with respect to x, then we would use the product rule if z was a product of two functions of x, u of x and v of x. We find that dz dx equals u times dv dx plus v times du dx. When we're using implicit differentiation, when do we use implicit differentiation? Now, if we're talking about, let's say, finding the derivative of y with respect to x, we would use it if we have some expression that's got a mixture of x and y terms where it is difficult or impossible to make y the subject, such that it is easiest instead to differentiate term by term with respect to x. But this means some of the terms we'll be differentiating will involve functions of y, other than just the ordinary y to the power of 1. And when we're differentiating a function of y with respect to x, it becomes the derivative of the function of y with respect to y times dy dx. So these two results will help us to be able to differentiate a function that involves both implicit differentiation and the product rule. Let's now look at an example. So here is an example where we would need to use the method of implicit differentiation, as in the expression shown here, if we're finding dy dx, clearly there's no nice way of making y the subject of that. So it would be better to differentiate term by term with respect to x. But we're going to need to use the product rule a couple of times here. First of all, for this product, x squared times y cubed, we're also going to need to use it again for the next product, 4x times cos y. So let's look at each of these in turn before we put this all together into an example. First of all, if we're looking at finding the derivative with respect to x of x squared times y cubed, then here we would let u equal x squared, v equals y cubed. Now we said that the product rule also involved the derivative of u with respect to x, that's just 2x, and the derivative of v with respect to x. And this is where we need to be careful, because here we're differentiating a function of y with respect to x. So this is where we first of all need to differentiate that with respect to y, which will give 3y squared, and multiply the result by the derivative of y with respect to x, which is dy dx. So what does that mean? That then tells us that the derivative of x squared y cubed with respect to x. Now we said that the product rule is u times dv dx, so that will be those multiplied together. That is, that will be, when we multiply them and just tidy it up a bit, that will be 3x squared y squared dy dx. And then it will be plus v times du dx, so that will be plus 2xy cubed. So later on we'll then put that back into our expression to find the derivative. Now let's focus on the second part of our initial expression that's going to require use of the product rule, namely 4x times cos y. So in this case we could let u equal to 4x and v would be cos y. Again, because that's a product, we would work out du dx is 4 in this case. What about dv dx? Would that just be negative sine y? No, because it's a function of y that we're differentiating with respect to x. So that will be the derivative of this function with respect to y, but it must be multiplied by dy dx. And then putting those together in our product rule, derivative with respect to x of 4x times cos y will then once again be u times dv dx, which will be negative 4x sine y dy dx, when we multiply those and just tidy it up a bit, plus v times du dx, which will be 4 cos y. So here are the derivatives of the products that we've just worked out. 
Now let's think back to what we were originally wanting to do. We we're wanting to find dy dx given the following expression. So that means to find dy dx, we need to start by differentiating both sides of this with respect to x. So the terms we've just worked out will come in handy because we would first be working out derivative of x squared y cubed with respect to x, which we have seen was 3x squared y squared dy dx plus 2xy cubed. We would then be adding on the derivative with respect to x of 4x times cos y, and we've found that that is in fact minus 4x sine y dy dx plus 4 cos y. So those added together give us the derivative with respect to x of the left-hand side. All of this will then be equal to the derivative of the right-hand side with respect to x. And differentiating 9x with respect to x just gives 9. The minus 8, that just differentiates to 0, giving us just 9 on the right-hand side. Now what do we do? We now need to make dy dx the subject. And the best way to do that is to rearrange this so that all terms involving dy dx, which I'm just rewriting now, are on the left-hand side of the equation. And all other terms are rearranged to be on the right-hand side. So in this case, that will involve subtracting 2xy cubed from both sides also subtracting 4 cos y from both sides so that those terms are now on the right hand side. It is then just a matter of taking dy dx out as a common factor on the left which gives us dy dx times 3x squared y squared minus 4x sine y and that's equal to the same thing as we had before on the right hand side. And then the final thing we do is we simply divide both sides by this expression here. So in this case we would be dividing both sides by the 3x squared y squared minus 4x sine y and then dividing this side by that as well will just make it cancel from there which leaves us in this example with the following expression for dy dx. So the main thing is to differentiate term by term with respect to x in the original expression. Then we use the product rule in cases where we have products where they might both be functions of x or functions of y or they might be a mixture as in this case. And finally we then rearrange to make dy dx the subject.